says that it's live. We'll take a couple seconds for people to start getting on, but you can yeah. go ahead and get started. Welcome aboard, everybody. Hi, guys. We'll wait a couple minutes Woo. and let you guys hop on here. One by one. Slowly but surely. Yes. We got exciting mm -hmm. stuff for you tonight. Now we're expecting an audience of about a million people, so we'll be able get to your shot. seat while you can. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred bucks on eBay. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're good to go ahead and get started. Right, cool. Yeah. Well, um, so we are some new faces on the Remax page. I'm sure you guys have been used to seeing us, but get used to it. You'll be seeing these beautiful faces here at least once a month. Um, we are here to cover the insurance side of home buying, renting, and being a landlord. So we're here to keep insurance fun. We're one of the youngest agencies in Cincinnati, and we strive to be the best. So coming at you. Uh, we are Firehouse. Uh, my name is Vinny, and then we have Chelsea here. Hi, guys. As well as Ken. So again, we're all owners here at Firehouse, and um, let's get a little bit into why we are Firehouse. So it's obviously the interesting name. We're not here to sell you subs, we swear, but we will bring you subs if you want. Um, but now, so Firehouse Insurance, we actually are operating out of an old firehouse um, that got renovated to a an office space. So back in the 70s, there's a ton of history with the building. Um, and thanks to our lovely Chelsea, we kind of ran with the branding of Firehouse Insurance, and that's who we are today. Um, we are over on the east side in Marymont, but historical Marymont, so don't hold that against us too much. I know there's a lot of west siders. I myself am a west sider, so I got you. <laughs> um, but here's a little history behind us, the then and the now. So as you know, that's where they parked the fire truck, and then that's where we're standing. So. You see all our smiling faces and our two lovely puppies. So Chief of Operations and Chief of Puddles. Don't they, want to get on their back side. They may be here the next time, so mm -hmm. we'll feature them on one of these videos, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we'll introduce a little bit of who we are. Yeah. So with Chelsea. Yeah, so hi, guys. I'm from the Springfield area originally. Um, I actually went to college at Miami University and fell in love with Cincinnati and kind of never left. So um, I've been here now for about five years and I've uh, been an intern quite a while. So I'm happy to be here with you guys tonight and thanks oh. for coming on. All right, my name is Vinny and uh, as I told you guys before, I am a Cincinnati native and West Sider. Um, born and raised, went to Elder High School. So I know there's a no kills crowd, so don't hold that against me too much. but I'm still here. Um, graduated from Elder and then went to UC. So Bearcat, go Bearcats, graduated from there. Um, and I also have about five years of insurance experience. Came right out of college just doing insurance. So um, something rare, something you don't see these days. And I'm happy I had that background. Hey guys, I'm, uh, I'm Ken. <clears throat> I was actually uh, born and raised on the east side and uh, went to Anderson. So we have some of that east-west rivalry there. but. Um, I actually went to Ohio State for a couple of years and um, finished my degree at UC in, in finance and um, also about five years of experience. So very uh, grateful that we got this opportunity to you know, start this together. Yeah. All in all, we have about seven people in our firehouse and uh, the average age, actually fun fact for you, the average age of the insurance agent is 58. Average age of firehouse is 27. 12. Twelve. I've established it. Twelve. Just an observation. <laughs> Maybe a little bit young, but our wisdom goes years and years. <laughs> All right. Well, perfect. Well, um, a little bit more about us. So obviously, Firehouse Insurance. That's our name. Um, but we're actually a brokerage. So we carry over twenty companies with personal lines and commercial, as well as life insurance. So we do. The whole kit and caboodle, um, and these are some, just some that we offer, and we're going to dive into more about like how the brokerage works. I know there's been a lot of misconceptions on that, and um, again, just shout out to our awesome companies. Uh, they treat us well, and we treat them well, so we're excited. I love it. Well, to Tell see. Me. <laughs> All right, so again, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, why broker with insurance? Why, why should I choose Firehouse? I actually had a friend today who was buying a uh, condo. He said, 
Um, now, are you offering the insurance? No, Firehouse does not offer the insurance. We don't insure you. What we do is we third party, so we're a broker. So we have over 20 companies, we represent them. Um, as you saw on the previous slide, we do no fees. There are absolutely zero fees when it comes to brokering. So the way we get paid is we're just an extension of the said company. So we put you with the company and then the company then pays us the commission. So we don't charge you anything uh, for our services. Our services are free to you. And we like to look at it as working for the customer. So Absolutely. technically you're, you, yeah, you are our boss. So you tell us what to do, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just to get a little bit into every single thing we have up here. So what this basically means is we shop through multiple companies. You know, that's the broker aspect. That's what broker means. Um, as far as the bigger companies, you know, they have a um, basically a one size fits all. We try to get away from that. So we don't try to jam every single client. Every single client is going to be different. They have different needs. That's why we have multiple options. For you. We don't try to jam you in one single company because that's the best company. We find you the best because the best for you. Um, it's important because actually what we do, and I know you guys have been affected, so I'm telling you, Kevin. Um, so each year, if you're with one company, renewals, gotta hate renewals, but love renewals, um, because on the broker aspect, we shop for you every single year to guarantee the best rate, other than sticking with your same company every year, that's just going to give you their rate and keep giving you their rate until you are ticked off at that high rate. So just let you know, we're always looking out for your best interest. Um, and again, no fees attached, absolutely zero dollars. So. That's what we do, a little bit about us. Um, and that's why you should broker no matter what you do. Um, and more or less with Firehouse, we are actually one of the most legal brokers because we carry the top three preferred companies. Um, shout out to Frange, Safeco, as well as MetLife. Some insurers will only carry one or two. We carry all three, so that's nice. That's more options for you. And uh, again, shout out to those guys. Uh, not to play favorites, we love all our companies, but. Those guys are preferred. So. so what I'm going to be touching base on is the renter's insurance and the different coverage that comes with renter's insurance. Um, some things you may not know, some things you may know, um, but renter's insurance, I won't, you know, complicate it. It's really easy. It's three main things, and it's to cover your property, so what you bring in to said renters or said location, uh, liability, which will cover you legally. And then the deductible. So deductible is very important. Um, usually with renters, you want to choose the lowest because it's the uh, least expensive. Because the renters insurance is usually ranges from about seventy to one hundred twenty dollars a year. Um, given that, that's the basic renters insurance package. So usually, if you take a deductible from five hundred to fifty, it can be the difference of three dollars for you. So that's why you always want to get the option of the lowest deductible. Um, to dive a little bit deeper into the slide, um, as I said, it doesn't take a PhD in insurance to understand renters. Um, you don't need to be in it as long as us. You can literally go online to Firehouse and get your quote. So, um, But it's very simple. You can figure it out in a matter of five, ten minutes. Um, so broken down, so what we have is your stuff. So that means that it's your clothing, your TV, your electronics, your, your jewelry. Um, again, everything you bring in, uh, you want to make sure you know which limits are covered to a certain extent, meaning that your jewelry is only covered up to, let's say, $1,000. You want to make sure you know that. Moving forward. Um, jewelry is not cheap either. So a lot of times it goes beyond 1000 and if you don't have it scheduled or covered in a certain way, you don't discuss that with your agent, they're only going to give you 1000 bucks, even though you can take 10000 for it. So just be careful with that. Especially that you need for it. I know, you gotta be careful with these things. <laughs> um, and then the next is liability coverage. So, this is basically um, if someone gets hurt on your property, you're liable. Um, again, and then if you're in a unit, something gets damaged, or you even damage another unit. So, if you're in a multiplex, um, something floods, or if you're cooking popcorn late at night, we all do. So, don't say no. But, uh, <laughs> and then you end up smoking it up, overcooking. It goes to another unit, there's smoke damage, that's covered as well. 
ladies, if you've ever mm. left your curling irons on, your flat iron, anything like that, and there is a fire, you are held liable. So it is so important that you carry that liability coverage. And like Vinny said, it's so cheap for you to carry. So mm -hmm. I've definitely been guilty of that, and it, it gets kind of dangerous. So. Cool. Um, and then again, how the way the deductible works. So a lot of people, um, they don't really understand that it's just subtracted. So basically, if you have $4,000 worth of stuff that goes missing or that is going to be paid out to you, it's minus your deductible. So let's say you have that lowest deductible of two fifty. dollars So and you have $4,000 and stuff, it's going to be thirty seven fifty dollars paid to you. Um, rather than if you keep that higher deductible just to save eight bucks for the year instead of the four grand, it's only going to be three. So that's why it's very important that you know your deductible and then you know what with the agent how they do that and the price difference. So, we'll that. okay, and then more on home and rent insurance, but uh, we're focusing on rent insurance now and we're going to cover your electronics and that bling bling, what we uh, were talking about, the jewelry. <laughs> Um, so with, um, actually insurance companies, what they do is they offer a special coverage, um, and it's called scheduling. So what that basically means is we're talking about the engagement ring. Let's say you have a $5,000 engagement ring, um, one and a half carats, whatever it may be. You want to make sure you schedule that. And what that means is you're basically providing coverage for that specific piece of jewelry, um, separately from the policy. And usually this will be worldwide coverage, um, and it's all payroll coverage. So it's not just name payroll, meaning anything that happens to it, it's covered, and it's covered in full. Um, so mysterious disappearance, rock slips out, you know, whatever it may be. And again, worldwide. Um, and usually when you schedule it, you only pay a certain amount of deductible. You don't you never even pay the full deductible. Um, it varies by company, but on average, it's about fifty dollars. So. That's how that works um, for the jewelry. And um, with your laptop, so again, um, laptops, gaming stuff, monitors, TVs, anything you can think of electronic, you can also do as an electronics endorsement. Um, and what that, in your phones too. And what that means is, so basically if your phone drops in a lake, if you're canoeing on a Saturday night, Saturday day with the buddies, um, and it, whoop, falls out of the canoe. Um, obviously, we're not getting that back. Um, so what will happen is you'll call your insurance company. You won't call, not to become Verizon, but you won't call Verizon and call Shurion and pay $200 for a refurbished phone. What you'll do is you'll call your insurance company, explain what happened. You'll pay the usually $50 deductible. We have a question. Um, I heard you need to keep UPC codes from big items like a new TV for insurance purposes. Is that true? It is, I wouldn't say true, but it doesn't hurt to keep everything mm -hmm. such as that. So receipts, everything's electronic these days, so everyone should have a copy. But bigger purchases, such as TVs, like thousands to a couple thousand, it wouldn't hurt to keep that receipt on it. We so always I'm, like people, too, to do, like, photo logs, because if you do have, like, a vandalism or a theft, you know, you're upset. There's something that just happened, and, you know, you're not maybe remembering everything. So when you talk to the adjuster, insurance agent, you may not remember every little thing that was in there that could be super expensive and add up that you may remember six months later. So when you get your apartment set up, take photos. And then when you buy things, just kind of update things throughout the year because some companies are pickier than others. Mm -hmm. So never a bad idea to keep that log. Absolutely. To your best defense, I mean, I would keep it. Yeah, all sort of receipts, big purchases, you never know. So absolutely. But, um, but yeah, coming one into electronics such as that, um, you only pay fifty dollars, and then you call your insurance company, um, and they will send you a check for the phone, or so or how the clearance process works. It, it varies different by companies, but that's usually how it works if you have that coverage on there, which is nice. Um, and then again, I kind of went over this, but um, how do you schedule? It's really easy. All you have to do is really contact your agent if you know who they are. I hope you do. Um, please don't call the 1 800 number because, you know, that gets a little messy, but uh, not like, or um, just joking. But if you do want to schedule something, just call your insurance company and say, hey, I just acquired this purchase, or hey, I just learned about so and so. I would like to schedule this, or how would I get this covered special? 
your agent or the call center rep or somebody should be able to direct you to someone who will be able to explain that to you and explain you know, the increase in how that all works. So again, it varies company by company, but um, again, just ask them, call them up, and there'll be a delightful plethora of information for you. So, uh, all right, moving on. So this is a little bit about going into um, transitioning from the renters to the home insurance and you know picking your all-star and whatnot. Um, I know a lot of people have done that, especially with Remax, um, going from renter to homeowner, because that's the ultimate goal, um, obviously. Um, but we talked about everything on the importance. It looks like you're ready to go to the homeowner's insurance. No, you don't need $200,000 to buy a $200,000 house on this conception. So please just reach out to a Remax realtor. They'll be able to tell you all the specifics. Um, but it can be very easy with Mara and her team. Shout out to Remax. <laughs> um, but basically, you just reach out to the realtor. Um, they'll assist you with some prereqs. Um, you'll want to get pre-approved for a loan. They'll usually have a contact for you. Um, if not, just choose someone uh, that you do trust, um, properly picked out. Um, once you're pre-approved for a loan, you'll then submit the offer, and then I'm sure that uh, there's much more to it, but once the offer is accepted, you then go into print inspections, um, and then with the inspections, um, they have your house pretty much. Um, obviously, it's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> but that's a very broad overview for someone very new to home buying scenario. Um, like I said, my buddy just reached out to me for insurance today. He said it's way over his head. He said he wished he could have learned about all this prior. I told him, hey, here's home buying seminar. So what are her doing? But no, overview, that's basically how it looks like. Um, to speak on our behalf of the home buying process, home insurance, condo insurance, it's going to be the easiest at landlord insurance. It's going to be the easiest thing you do in the whole entire thing, just because it's pretty much a couple calls and then you're done. Um, just because we as the agent take care of most of it for you. So you call, you give us some information, um, we'll quote it. Again, choose a broker or choose Firehouse, either one. Um, but we will go through our 20 companies, we'll quote the best company for you, with the best price, best coverage. We'll go over the coverage with you and make sure that you are comfortable with everything. And then usually what we'll do is we'll email the lender and just say, hey, this is the quote we're working with. And then upon that, the lender then sends us the approval to collect said insurance when they need it. And then we'll do that on the client's behalf based on the client, sign off on it. And then that's pretty much it. That think that's the home insurance. Um, so again, one of the easiest things we do, uh, it really takes probably 30 minutes to an hour uh, based on that. Um, and then from here, we will go ahead and tag Team Chelsea into the mix what? for some different fun facts with home insurance. So, yes. we will let her take over. Yeah, all right, perfect. All right, well, I'm going to scoot over here just so I can see it a little bit better. Um, so, one thing we definitely wanted to talk to you guys about is the importance of insuring at replacement cost and what that means. Um, you're going to hear this term a ton during the home buying process. Even during um, your renter's insurance, too, we want to make sure that your home is insured at replacement cost. Your mortgage uh, lender is definitely going to want to make sure it's insured at replacement cost. So what does that mean? It means that we're going to put the value that we need to rebuild the home in case of a fire, a tornado, catastrophe strikes, and we have to rebuild from the ground up um, in contract to market value. So market value, if I put my house on the market, it's just how much it's going to sell for. So that can fluctuate, and that's not really how we insure things. So everything on your policy should say replacement cost. Um, that also applies to your roof, and that's not necessarily something your lender is looking at, but surely your broker should be looking at that for you. Um, when you see replacement costs on your roof coverage, that means that we're going to guarantee get the highest payout possible on that roof. So if you have something that happens, the roof can be ten, twelve thousand dollars to replace. So we want to make sure that you are getting the maximum dollar available to fund that insurance. All right, and the next one. Yeah, just the next one. Oh, sorry, I see my 
Oh, is that good? All right. So um, replacement costs, like I said, this also applies to renter's insurance. Um, but especially on the homeowner's insurance side, taking a lot more stuff with you when you're filling up the house and buying furniture and you have multiple rooms. So replacement costs on your personal property is super important. A lot of companies will put actual cash value there. Um, and we hate to see that because we know if you have a loss, you're going to be very disappointed and you're going to get about half of what you really deserve to replace your item. Um, for example, furniture, you go out and buy a couch, I mean, it's two, three thousand dollars, maybe you get lucky and get eight hundred dollar couch. You know, they're pretty expensive. If you have a total loss of theft, of fire, and it gets ruined, you would get about half of that if it's covered at actual cash value. So you can't go to the store and replace your couch at that same level of quality. Um, you never want to see someone in that situation, especially when you're dealing with a loss. Um, same thing for firearms, jewelry, and furs. You just have to be very uh, careful how you cover those. So kind of what Amy was talking about with scheduling. If you talk to one of our firehouse team and you have um, any jewelry there, any heirlooms, artwork, firearms, We'll go ahead and schedule those separately for you so that you do get your full value from them if you do have a loss or a theft. Okay, third line. Do I want to end there? <laughs> All right, so we had a client recently thought thing about service line was a 1 800 number. So, service line is something that is a very integral part of your home. Um, it is a line that goes from your home to out to the street and it takes your sewage out of your house. Um, it's really important that that doesn't get backed up or get clogged. Um, and if it does, it can be super expensive to replace. So I think the estimate we got online was about 8000 maybe five, but they have to fill up your lawn, they have to fill up your sidewalk. Um, service line coverage is something that we feel very passionate about because it's very expensive to our clients, and a lot of insurance companies do not cover it. So you won't even see it anywhere on the policy. Um, it's something important to know about, it's something important to ask about, because if it does go wrong with your house and if you're buying a new home you don't really know the home and how it was taken care of it's not usually coming up on inspection um it's super important that you have an insurance company cover it for you um so let's talk about water backup pump it up and then back it up love that um <laughs> so water backup coverage um talks about if your um sump pump fails on you, a lot of you may not know what a sump pump is. <laughs> I surely didn't it before I had the home. But it's usually found in your basement, um, and it makes sure that that water, if you know something goes wrong, that it gets that water up out of your basement, but sometimes it can fail. So we wanna make sure that we cover you for the right amount, because some companies will cap you at like 5,000. Put a lot of water damage in your basement, $5,000 usually isn't gonna cut it. So we make sure we max that coverage out for you, and if a company doesn't offer that, we usually don't give that to you. Um, it's also really important for us to know, is the basement finished or unfinished? Because that really depends on how much we're gonna give you on the coverage and how much you truly need. So talk to us about that, we'll make sure you're covered. Richard? Yes, sir. All right, so I get to uh, talk about liability coverage. Um, and this Ooh. is actually something that is on the renters, the homeowners, and the landlord. Um, and this is actually, um, it's usually around 300,000 as a standard, 100,000 on, on renters um, and even landlords, I, I usually recommend a million. Um, and what those numbers really mean is if um, someone comes on the property and gets hurt or if you're sued for any reason, let's say you drop your bag on somebody's foot at the airport, most people don't know that's covered under the homeowners, renters and landlord liability. Um, so it's basically negligence, they'll pay, they'll pay um, even salary and wages if you have to miss and go to court dates and stuff like that. So. Um, super important part. Um, we like to max that out. It costs maybe two dollars a month to take it from the lowest to the highest coverage. Um, and it's just it's just one of those things that you might never use, but when you do use it, it could be a million dollars, and you know that's that's life changing. Um, fun fact: so golfers, if you break windows, damage anything, hit somebody, um, that's all covered under your liability coverage under renters, landlord, or homeowner. <clears throat> 
Lords of the land. So uh, the landlord is uh, also known as the uh, LTR, like a long-term rental, or a DP3, which is a dwelling buyer. Um, and the reason it's called that is because unlike a homeowner, it doesn't cover personal property. Uh, and if it does, it's just a smaller amount, let's say appliances or things in the common space, um, stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and every landlord has this type of policy, whether it's um, a duplex all the way up to 100 you know, unit complexes, um, things like that. <clears throat> All right, what does that cost? So um, some differences between a home insurance and landlord policy. The biggest one, like I mentioned, is the personal property. On some homes, you'll get up to 170, 200,000 in personal property coverage because it's an amount that is calculated from your dwelling. Um, on the landlord, I often see times it's zero, um, but you know it could be 15,000 for appliances and things like that. Um, a, a huge difference is the loss of use versus loss of rent. So um, if the house burns down, you obviously can't live there while it's being rebuilt. So you have to have a hotel or additional living expenses that's covered on your home policy. So if your rental property burns down, this actually covers the amount you keep getting in rent while you're missing that that's being rebuilt. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, last but not least, um, <clears throat> So with the um, the loss of rental income, is that even yeah. if like two or three units are out of service out of a larger complex mm -hmm. as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and is that standard or is that an add-on? You want to make sure you have enough coverage because that can vary per company how much you're offering and if something your agent can work with you on increasing. If you do choose, you want to make sure that if you do have a landlord policy with us, if you have a couple units out, that you're not put in a bad spot because of that new and some is standard, but the herb one sometimes can be up and up. Um, stuff like that, especially with a hundred unit you know, complex if the whole thing gets wiped out, it's a lot of this income. Um, okay, so this one's uh, kind of fun facts. So I'm gonna do a, a scenario with a visitor that comes over um, because most people don't know who is actually at fault in a lot of these scenarios. So the first one is a visitor goes to an apartment and trips on his own shoelaces outside. Yeah. Um, no one is responsible. It's actually the person who tripped. Well, so you can't sue anybody. Okay, but if the visitor is invited in and falls or hurts himself, um, the tenant of that unit is actually responsible. So if that person was to sue, it would not be on the landlord, it would be on the person who invited them into, into their space. Um, and then the last one is a visitor trips on an icy, icy walkway or a broken step going into the apartment. That's on the landlord. So any negligence, you know, if you if you should have shoveled the sidewalks and you didn't, and someone falls and gets hurt, that's that's a winnable court case, and you know, you're really bad on that. So um, all that really wraps around the liability and why that's important. Um, if anybody's uh, watched the show Shameless, um, there's a guy Frank. He's an alcoholic. He's like a homeless guy. Um, one of his um, many trips was to go and knock on people's door, and if he saw them home, he would like fall off and like act like he hurt himself. Because he knows that there's the medical payments on the home insurance as well as the liability. So if he does sue, that could actually pay out in certain scenarios. I thought that was a funny little silly thing that some people are like, oh, why don't I need liability insurance? Well, Frank, I'm coming for you. <laughs> and uh, that's it. We're uh, Firehouse Insurance, first responders, and protecting your future. Hope you learned something today. Yeah, we are super excited. We got to explain, you know, each of these for you, and we hope your journey from renters to homeowners goes smoothly. And super excited to be a part of your feedback team over here. So thank you so much. Feel free to reach out with any questions, or if you guys need anything, and or just to uh, say jokes to Vinny, either one. And we'll see well, you guys next time. Really good job. Right, I'm gonna jump in real quick. Okay, great. We stay up here. Up to you. Okay, so if you've got any questions, make sure you can comment on the video, whether you're watching now or you're watching later. Um, somebody will get back to you. If it's about um, anything that's REMAX related, we'll get back to you. If it's anything Firehouse related, you can forward it on to them. Their website is linked in the comment section. It's also in the description. Um, feel free to reach out to them either through that post or to them directly, all their contact information is on their website. If you go to, I think it's Meet the Team, I think it's where you want to look. Um, all of that is there. 
If there's anything that we didn't cover that you think might be good information to learn in these, these little bits about um, insurance and everything that's involved, let us know. We'd be happy to share that with them so they can bring that information with them the next time. Um, I think that's about it. We did have some questions. We got those answered. Um, they will be back again next month. And uh, I think that's it. I uh, hope everybody has a great evening and rest of the week. We will catch you later. Bye. We need outro music now. Oh, that's <laughs>